Was Mohammed a paedophile? The short answer is no. But this highly offensive question is uh, asked increasingly these days, particularly on social media and by Christians, missionaries who, in my experience, taunt Muslims with uh, this accusation that Muhammad was a paedophile. Um, and this in particular is because of his marriage to Aisha. But when you look at the historical uh, evidence presented in context, we find that this allegation is in fact baseless. And that's what I intend to do now, briefly. Scholars disagree concerning the age of Aisha when she married the Prophet, the, earlier, the earliest estimate being that she was nine years old. This means that the Prophet's the marriage contract was ratified after Aisha reached puberty, which was considered adulthood in ancient Arab society. A marriage between an older man and a younger woman was customary and socially appropriate in that era, considering that such marriages were an important means of survival in a harsh desert environment and that people had a much lower life expectancy than they, they do have today. Professor Colin Turner of the University of Durham here in England, he is uh, an expert on Islam uh, in the Middle East Studies Department, explains the context of the prophet's marriage. He writes, A marriage between an older man and a young girl was customary among the Bedouins, as it still is in many societies across the world today. It was not unheard of in Muhammad's time for boys and girls to be promised to each other in marriage almost as soon as they were born, particularly if the union was of direct political significance to the families concerned. However, such marriages were almost certainly not consummated until both parties had entered adulthood, which Arabs in the 7th century tended to reach at an earlier age than Westerners today. It is highly unlikely that Muhammad would have taken Aisha into his bed until she was at least in her early teens, which was wholly in keeping with the customs of the day and in context not in the least improper. That's uh, Professor uh, Colin Turner, Islam, The Basics, published by Routledge, 2006, pages 34 to 35. The uh, scholar of religions, Karen Armstrong, she's a, a very uh, distinguished and accomplished uh, publisher on Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism. In her biography of the Prophet, writes, There was no impropriety in Muhammad's betrothal to Aisha. Marriages conducted in absentia to seal an, an alliance were often contracted at this time between adults and minors who were even younger than Aisha. This practice continued in Europe until well into the early modern period. There was no question of consummating the marriage until Aisha reached puberty, when she would be married off like any other girl. End quote. That's from her Muhammad, a prophet for our time, published by HarperCollins. Interestingly, Christian tradition recalls a similar marriage between, can you guess, the much older Joseph to the young Virgin Mary. And this is even more extreme. The Catholic Encyclopedia says of Joseph, a year after his wife's death, as the priests announce through Judea that they wish to find in the tribe of Judea a respectable man to espouse Mary, then 12 to 14 years of age, Joseph, who was at that time 90 years old, went up to Jerusalem among the candidates. Uh, that's the Catholic Encyclopedia uh, in New Advent website, 1995. So she may have been as young as 12 and he may have been as old as 90. Christians cannot possibly use the prophet's marriage to condemn Islam, for if they do so, they would have to condemn Joseph, St. Joseph, the husband of the Virgin Mary. And I can't imagine they would ever do that. But interestingly, marriage in Islam is not simply about sex. It's a, a spiritual agreement based, as the Quran puts it, on love and mercy. In Surah 30, verse 21, it reads, He, God, created spouses from among yourselves for you to live with in tranquility. He ordained love and kindness between you. So this is what God has ordained for marriage. Ratifying a marriage contract does not necessitate sex, 
There is no evidence whatsoever that the Prophet had sex with Aisha before puberty. And that's a crucial point. And just to um, emphasize that point, just to quote a couple of Western sources uh, talking about the age of consent and marriage in the West, quoting from uh, a textbook, Adolescence, Sexuality and the Criminal Law, a Multidisciplinary Perspective. It's a handbook discussing the regulation of adolescent sexual behaviour and provides lots of useful historical information. It's mainly written for the legal profession, uh, for those interested in issues of criminality and the sexuality of children and adolescents. And it says uh, on page uh, 25... Age of consent throughout history has usually coincided with the age of puberty, although at some times it has been as early as seven. Early on, age of consent was a familial or tribal matter and only became a legal one in the Greco-Roman period. Rome, the Roman tradition served as the base for Christian Europe as well as the Christian church itself, which generally essentially based upon biological development at 12 or even 14, but continued to set the absolute minimum at seven, seven years old. And then um, another quote here. Traditionally across the globe, the age of consent for sexual union was a matter for families to decide or a tribal custom. In most cases, this coincided with signs of puberty, menstruation for a woman and pubic hair for a man. And then coming particularly to the United States, um, which uh, really surprised me, in the 19th century, the usual age of consent in the United States was, believe it or not, 10 years. In the state of Delaware until the mid-1960s, it was seven years. Um, in A Guide to America's Sex Laws, the authors note the law governing the age of consent has changed dramatically in the United States during the 20th century. Most states codified a statutory age of consent during the 19th century and the usual age was 10 years. Now, this is stated by Richard A. Posner. He was chief judge of the United States Court of Appeals. Um, so that was his uh, statement of the affairs. And then coming to Britain... Uh, according to British common law during the colonial period, the age of consent was seven. Today, we are astounded that girls of this age were assumed to know enough about sex or about sin to, to make such a decision competently. But nevertheless, that was the reality. So age of consent laws are, are quite different from what they are today, clearly. So what, in the light of this... Um, it cannot be said, coming back to Muhammad again, that there is any evidence at all that the Prophet committed paedophilia. Now, this was because the age of consent, the age of puberty and the age of adulthood were all at the same time, the age of puberty. And Muhammad would have consummated the marriage uh, several years after the betrothal when she was technically an adult, when she was a woman, according to the customs and the historical context of the day. So it would have been an appropriate thing to do. So um, it's not right, however, I mean, obviously, I'm not a scholar. I'm not here to produce uh, fatwas, but uh, in, it's not right to uh, follow the customs of 7th century Arabia, in my view, we need to take into account the earth, the, the customs of our own societies. And in our societies, the legal age uh, of marriage is quite different. In Britain, it's uh, 16. I understand in the vast majority of Muslim countries, the marriageable age is between 16 and 18 years of age. And that's the custom you follow. There's no uh, set age, as far as I'm aware, in the Sharia for, uh, for marriage. So to summarise, the Prophet's marriage to Aisha was appropriate considering the circumstances of life in ancient Arabia. Uh, their marriage was not based upon lust or abuse, but upon their shared uh, spiritual mission uh, to uh, deliver these teachings of Islam to humanity, because Aisha went on to become one of the greatest scholars of Islam and a transmitter of knowledge of the Sunnah of the Prophet, particularly regarding 
uh, women's matters, women's issues, and she's highly regarded even today for that knowledge. Um, so I think that is in, in a very rough way, in a very um, uh, simple way, the reason why it is anachronistic, to put it politely. Uh, in other words, you're reading back our contemporary Western um, understandings, which are very historically relative, reading it back into history to other times and other cultures and judging those cultures. That's called anachronism. And it's not a good thing. It's an intellectual sin. Um, most cultures throughout history, in the Bible, of course, as well, the age of marriage was the age of puberty. If we condemn Muhammad, we condemn the Virgin Mary, we condemn Joseph, we condemn uh, the vast majority of people throughout history for whom adulthood began at puberty. The bar mitzvah is another example uh, when boys and, and girls now, uh, usually about 12, 13 years of age, uh, are technically adults. They take on the burden of following all the commandments of the Torah. This is when they enter into the adult community. Um, so it's a different age from the ever increasing age, seems like uh, after uh, ever increasing increase in the age of marriage and when childhood uh, ends. Uh, we now have adolescence which didn't exist before the 19th century. Anyway, that's enough for now. I hope that was of interest. Until next time.